Hello and welcome back friend. Today we will discuss some extremely useful tips that will be helpful for you while preparing a schedule or checking it to keep your schedule free from error, make it more presentable and understandable to the other people who will use this schedule. So let's start with number one. And the first tip is always keep the indicator column on for your schedule. And for that, you need to right click here, insert column and type indicator. This is it. Click on it. And the column is here. There is nothing written on the header. Only an I symbol is there which represents the indicator. The usefulness of this column is if you make any error in your schedule, then it will be notified in this column against that task. Suppose you have done manual scheduling for this task. By the logic of the scheduling and linking of the task, this task has a start date of 1st October 2024, but you are changing it to 2nd October 2024. First of all, it will uh, show you a warning message, but still you can change the date. And immediately, your indicator column will show one warning message against that task, which will show this task has a start no earlier than constraint on Thursday, 3rd October 2024. So this is the usefulness of the indicator column. You get the information of error or warning in any of the tasks in a schedule. Especially it is very much useful when the schedule is long. See here against another task, indicator column is showing a warning message. Similarly, the indicator column shows error if a resource is over allocated or there are any other type of a warning or error in your schedule. The next tip is that never put a date manually in your schedule and after you prepare the schedule delete all the dates and click on auto schedule. How it works? I have prepared a schedule here and when I switch on the indicator column it shows some warning messages against some of the tasks. To make it error free I will select all the date from top to bottom and hit on delete. It will show you some changes but don't worry on that. For the summary level task, the duration and the start date, finish dates are deleted but we don't need to worry about that. Simply go to the top of the schedule, click on this box at the corner and click on auto schedule. All the start date and finish date and duration of the summary level task are now back and you can observe that all the warning regarding the date constraint in the indicator column is now removed. The entire schedule has become auto scheduled with no date constraint. So with this you will be one step further in making your schedule error free. The next tip is to highlight the summary level task with the appropriate color for the entire schedule so that a new user who is seeing the schedule for the first time can understand the schedule in a better way. Like for the project level task, you can use one particular color, while for the second level you can use a different color. For the next level, you can hold the control key and select them and use a third color. For the structure for which you are preparing the schedule, you can use another color, which will be useful to understand which are the structures that you have prepared the schedule for. So this will make your schedule better readable and understandable with the appropriate color scheme throughout the schedule. Although there is no direct implication on the scheduling or the date itself, using the color scheme makes your schedule better readable and understandable in a better way. The next tip that we will see is to have a remarks column for your schedule. It is always a good practice to have a remarks column in your schedule because you can recall any logic or any information based on which you have done the scheduling at a later date. For that, go to add new column, 
click on insert column and type text there are 30 text columns you can include in your schedule let us click on text one and one text based remarks column is here and let us take the example of scheduling the piling work of hospital block suppose we have considered three piling rigs for achieving these 105 days for the piling work so we are mentioning that here three piling rigs to be used and at a later date you will recall from the schedule itself that that what is the basis of the logic that you have given in your schedule like this you can consider the staging material set of one complete set of slab shuttering and two set of beam shuttering has been considered anything that you like you can mention here which will be useful for you at a later date to understand what was the logic when you were scheduling the project the next useful tips is to include the recurring task with the feature of recurring task in your schedule which you can get from the task tab going to the insert task button click on the down arrow key and click on the recurring task button monthly or quarterly project review meetings can be a good example for recurring task so let us include one monthly meeting which will be done every month for the project with all the stakeholders we have typed monthly review meeting the frequency will be monthly and ms project is asking which day of the month it should schedule so we are giving it the seventh of every month and by default it will show you the end date of the project end date so from the start till the end of the project ms project will now create one recurring task of monthly review meeting which will be scheduled every seventh day of the month click on ok and you will get a set of the monthly review meetings monthly review meeting 1 2 3 4 5 up to 42 because there must be 42 months in this schedule and these are scheduled for one day every month which is the seventh of that month so this will reduce your manual labor by preparing a schedule hence we consider it as a good practice another useful tip is to not delete a task after the schedule has been prepared suppose you have prepared a schedule and after that you find that some task will not be there suppose one floor of the building has been reduced so there will not be the 13th floor so these tasks should be deleted right but we will not delete these we will select all these tasks and go to the task tab from the ribbon above and we'll click on inactivate when we click on the inactivate link ms project will check the link between the successors and predecessors by itself and will will do the adjustment itself and you don't have to change the logic of any task after you have made them inactivated if you delete any task then the whole linking will be jeopardized and you have to check each and every task once again which were dependent on these tasks which you have deleted so this will save your manual labor as well as keep the schedule error free from any linking error a very important tip of scheduling in MS project is to insert the successor column after you have completed the schedule. Simply go to add new columns, insert column and write successor. Well, and this has come. Successor is just the opposite of the predecessor uh, which you already know. Suppose for the task number 12, the predecessor is 4. That is the task number 12 is linked with the task number 4 so this is the task number 4 and in the successor column you can see the number 12 because the 13 and 12 these two tasks are dependent on this task for a closed network schedule each and every task should have a successor other than the last one 
that is the handing over of the project only that task will not have any successor but other every task should have a successor to have a close network so it is a good practice to switch on the successor column and check each and every task for which you have no successor that means you need some other task to be linked with that task which has no successor as of now for example only the root slab part a has a successor but the root slab part b and c doesn't have any successor that means these two tasks are not within the closed network of the project schedule and no other task is dependent on these two tasks so if we remove these two tasks there will be no effect on the finish date of the project or any other task so these two tasks are redundant what we should do is to link other task with this task appropriately so that these two tasks are also become the part of the schedule simply the above roof part works will be possible only when all the three parts are completed so we should link task number 86 87 88 with the task number 89 let us iterate that and you can see now the successor fields of these two tasks are now populated with the task id of above group part task which we have just now linked with the part b and part c tasks accordingly you should check your entire schedule and ensure that each and every task has a successor the next useful tip is to check the free slack for each and every task before you finalize the schedule when you finalize the schedule or check it after preparation simply go to the add new column and type free slack it will show you for each and every task what is the duration by which you can delay that task from the schedule that you have just prepared for example this demolition of structures at proposed temporary block is showing you a free slack of 21 days that means you can delay this task by 21 days without affecting the end date of the project with this feature you will understand whether you are having any free slack for any task and you can make the schedule more flexible the next good tips is to have milestone task for your schedule appropriately whether or not your project has internal milestones as per the contract you should have your own internal milestones inside your schedule when the construction work start you should have appropriate milestones just like here for this hospital block building we are completing the roof part that is the rcc part is getting completed so we should insert one task here which will refer to completion of concreting work it can be anything any important task that you like that you feel that it should be included as a milestone the duration must be zero for all the milestone task and it should be related with the task appropriately for example for the completion of the concreting work the roof slab part should be completed and the above roof part is also should be completed so it should be linked with 83 87 88 89 so it will show you a milestone now this milestone is created and give it some other color to be distinct from the other task the formatting should be similar to the other milestones within the same schedule and this milestone task should be linked to the timeline simply right click on the task and click on the add timeline option in the menu click on that and a timeline is created where this milestone is displayed so this is a good practice to be followed while scheduling if you need more information on creating and maintaining a timeline in ms project we have another video whose link is given in the description you can see that video as well last but not the least another good practice is while printing the schedule after you have prepared the schedule you can press control p to print that schedule click on the print preview button and the schedule will be displayed here 
if you don't want to show the predecessor column just escape either you can hide this predecessor column from here or even you can drag the bar chart area on the predecessor part now go to the control p print once again and you can see that the, the predecessor part is not there before printing you should hide the indicator column as well and zoom out the bar chart area to adjust uh, that will be viewable in the print preview and yes now it is showing uh, one of 25 that is 25 total pages are there and your bar chart area has been fitted within the viewable area of your print preview you can customize the date range to be displayed in the print preview from here also to display your organization name or the project name you should go to the page setup click on header on the left center or right you can type anything that will be displayed on every pages of the print preview suppose your organization name is sample organization and center you can write this is a master construction schedule you can further format this text from here you can give any color make it bold or italic or change the font size and type click on ok in the footer also you can give the page number your uh, project name etc and click on ok and all this information will be displayed on the print preview so this is a good practice to make the people to which you will circulate the schedule to understand for which organization or for which project this schedule is. So these are the top 10 tips for the good practice as well as better scheduling that we have discussed in this video. If you have liked this, please share it with someone who also may like it and subscribe to our channel if you have not done it already. Thanks for watching. We will catch up in the next video.